My name is David Mayo, and I'm here to teach you about quadcopters. What is a quadcopter? As the name would suggest, a quadcopter is similar to a helicopter, except quadcopters have four upward-facing propellers. The four propellers on a quadcopter counter-rotate, causing the net torque to be zero if all the blades are spinning at the same speed. This eliminates the need for a small stabilizing propeller, like the one on the tail of a helicopter. Quadcopters also have a higher thrust-to-weight ratio than helicopters. Quadcopters have a huge number of applications. They can be used for military and surveillance purposes, shooting movies, tracking wildlife, delivering packages, and a seemingly infinite number of other possibilities. Now let's take a look at how a quadcopter actually works. On the hardware side, the important components are the motors, speed controllers, and sensors that are part of the main control board. The motors are typically brushless motors, which have the ability to rotate at the extremely high RPM rates required for quadcopter flight. They function by having neodymium magnets on the inside of the motor housing rotate into place when a charge is induced in the unmoving electromagnet inside the motor. The speed controllers determine the speed that the motors rotate based on an input signal from the microcontroller on the quadcopter. They are responsible for charging the different parts of the electromagnet quickly enough and in the right order to cause the motor to rotate. On the control board, the sensors that are critical to being able to hover are the accelerometer and the gyroscope. These are very similar to the sensors in your smartphone, and the fact that they are used so commonly in smartphones has greatly improved their quality and reduced their price. This has helped make copious quadcopters possible. Accelerometers can sense acceleration, including gravity, and gyroscopes can detect angular velocity. The combination of these two sensors can provide an accurate measurement of what angle the quadcopter is oriented relative to gravity. On the software side, let's look at what a quadcopter has to do in order to hover. It may seem intuitive that if all the motors are told to spin at the same speed, then the quadcopter will lift off perfectly and hover. But unfortunately, this is not the case. There are a number of different factors that prevent this from working, including air resistance, wind, and small variation in the motors themselves. If all the motors were spinning at a constant speed and the quadcopter started to tilt to one side, instead of balancing back, the quadcopter would just keep tilting more to that side until it crashed. What we need to do is use the information from our sensors about the quadcopter's angle of tilt and then adjust our motor speeds accordingly. Let's take a closer look at the algorithm that makes this possible. The method of adjusting the motor speeds in response to the sensor input is called proportional integral derivative. A good way to understand how PID works is to imagine that you are driving and you see a red light up ahead. Do you wait until the car is exactly at the red light to press on the brakes? No, of course not. If you did that, then your car would overshoot the light and cause a traffic accident. Instead, you start slowly pushing on your brakes when you first see the light, and then increase the pressure on the brakes until you come to a complete stop at the light. PID works the same way. It's an algorithm that calculates the near optimal way to reach your desired parameter either quadcopter angle or distance from a traffic light without overshooting. Let me demonstrate. When the quadcopter is tilted, the responding motor speeds will be calculated by the PID algorithm in order to keep the quadcopter balanced. If the quadcopter were to tilt to the left, the motors on the left side of the quadcopter would increase in speed, and the motors on the right side would decrease in speed. If I tilt the quadcopter at a steeper angle, you can see the difference in motor speeds is even more extreme. If I tap on the quadcopter, displacing it from its equilibrium position, you can see how the motors compensate and rotate the quadcopter back into a stable equilibrium. The stable hovering equilibrium is reached without the quadcopters oscillating back and forth. To better illustrate this point, I will set the proportional term in the PID algorithm to a value that is too high. As you can see, instead of converging to a stable hovering equilibrium, the quadcopter is oscillating back and forth which will likely result in the quadcopter crashing. I hope that I have unveiled some of the mystery behind how quadcopters work. I would like to point out that the sensors and control theory concepts implemented in quadcopters are also implemented in a number of different types of robots that you may be interested in learning more about. Thanks for watching.